From Esther Baptist Church on Witcher Creek, it's preaching time with Pastor Randy Wilson. Nineteen eighty-three, no, nineteen eighty-four, eighty-five. Do any of y'all that was here in that year? Do y'all remember me preaching? I know the preacher does because he was here because he asked me. But yeah. back in nineteen eighty-four, somewhere through there, I came to visit this church and came to visit on a Wednesday, and. Uh, met the preacher for the first time and we kind of got talking and he said well do you want to preach next Sunday morning <laughs> and uh, I said I would and uh, I know that y'all don't remember what I preached on but I do <laughs> uh, I preached on Barabbas and so uh, but anyhow it's been 30 some years ago and preacher graciously asked me to preach again this Sunday morning and so um, thank you and uh, just want to thank God for allowing me to Amen. preach Amen. so anyhow let me pray and I'll get started my heavenly father I want to thank you for Jesus Christ my savior thank you Lord for this honor and privilege that I have here to stand and to preach your word and I pray God I can exalt you and dear Lord I pray that you take these muddled words that I've got written down here and have them make sense for the folks here and pray the Holy Spirit of God would just take your word and would lodge it in their hearts and help us to be better Christians. And just want to thank you and praise you for everything that you do. Amen. Amen. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 17. It says here for... Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, Amen. not with wisdom's, wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. Amen. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made the foolishness or the foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound, to confound the wise, and that God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, and the base things of the world and the things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, the things which are not, to bring to naught the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him ye are in Christ Jesus, whom God hath made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. That is, according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Just look at verse 30 real quick. It says, but uh, of him ye are Christ Jesus, whom God hath made unto us, Christ Jesus made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Amen. 
Amen. I'll get back to that. Um, the first thing, that is, as you read this um, chapter here, it, you begin to see a comparison between you know, God and Jesus Christ and, and the world. Um, you can compare between what God thinks is wise and what the world thinks is foolish. Yeah, amen. You begin to, it begins to compare here that Paul says something that, you know, I don't want to preach with the wisdom of words, but I want to preach with the power of God. Amen. Yeah. And that, yeah. But there's something here, amen. Paul said here in verse 17, that, you know, Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the word, preach the gospel, not with the wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ be made of none effect. You know, there is something about real Bible preaching that God uses to help people to get saved and to get right and to live right. God will use real Bible preaching. Real Bible, biblical preaching can reveal hidden things of this world that you wouldn't even know what's going on unless the light of this scripture is put on it. Yeah. Real Bible preaching can um, reveal to you your motives and, and your hearts and your thoughts. And real Bible preaching starts with this word of God, yeah. this Bible that I have. This Bible, this King James Bible that I have here is the preserved Word of God written for me. It, God, anything I want to know that God wants me to know is found right in yeah, this scripture right. that I have in my hands right here. Now, if you think this book is, is just written by men and it's just a good book to go by good moral lessons, will help yourself. But I believe this book, is the Word of God yeah, given to us right. by God. And to have real Bible preaching, you need to have a real book. Amen. And this real book that I have right here is the Word of God. And so, but Paul said here that his purpose was to preach the gospel. And he said what not, how he didn't want to preach the gospel. He didn't want to preach the gospel with on words of wisdom. He wanted, Paul wanted something else when he preached. Um, Paul, you know, he, Paul was a very educated man. Yeah. Paul was an educated man. He was a Pharisee. He knew the Old Testament scriptures. Yeah. Um, <coughs> Paul could quote scripture. Paul was trained by a, a lawyer, a doctor of the law, and I'm sure Paul could speak. Um, um, speak very, very eloquently. I'm sure as any lawyer, you know, they can preach very eloquently and use words. That's what their job is. They use words. Yeah. And so I'm sure Paul could preach and teach and talk eloquently and use words of wisdom. But Paul said there in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, he said, my speech and my preaching is not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the power of God. And the reason that Paul wanted to use the power of God was to show that it is to demonstrate how that the word of God and the power of God and the yeah. preaching yeah. of this Bible, of this yeah. word of God, yeah. Yeah. how the yeah. preaching can convict people's hearts right. and get them to see things and how the light they can the blinders can fall off their eyes and they can see what is really being said and that they can get saved and born again. Yeah. Paul did not want his words to be flowingly eloquently with man's wisdoms of all the things that man talks about today and um, he wanted his preaching yeah. to be of the cross of Christ. Amen. He wanted his preaching to be realized that it's the death, burial, and resurrection Amen. of Jesus Christ Amen. that has any power. It's all pointed yeah. to Jesus Christ. Yeah. There are many eloquent speakers today masquerading as, as preachers and, 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 and pastors. And they preach just enough gospel to make you think that you heard something meaningful 
about um, Jesus Christ. Yeah, amen. A lot of them use um, pop psychology in trying to get you to live a better life or to live a, a moral life or to live a life with meaning or to um, live with a purpose. Or they want to try to teach you so that you can have little kids so little Johnny and little Susie can be, be, um, be good little kitties and grow up and be productive members of society. I mean, that's what a lot of, of uh, preachers or people in pulpits, they, they want to use that time for psychology training. And, and you can read all the psychology books. You can have, I guarantee you, you could probably have most preachers and Dr. Phil together and you couldn't tell the difference. Yeah, okay. Only one might say God and Jesus and the other one don't say it at all. And so... But they use, but they do, but Paul's preaching. They, he did not want to use these enticing words. Yeah, I, I mean, these um, preachers, they just, they make their money. A lot of the TV preachers or other pe preachers in, in churches, they just want to use this psychology and they will deceive you. And they're either intentionally or unintentionally. If you get deceived in your salvation, if you think that just be, be, believing in God is not enough, the Amen. devil believes in God. Yeah, yeah. Every demon, devil possessed person that came to Jesus, they all confessed that Jesus Christ yeah, was the Son yeah, of God. Yeah. So just believing yeah. is not enough. Yeah. Judas repented. Just a plain simple repentance is not enough. Amen. Somewhere the Holy Spirit of God has got to convict your heart. Amen. And it comes from preaching of this word of God right here. The Bible says that, that worldly sorrow worketh unto repentance. But godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. Yeah. And it comes from preaching of this word. Paul did not want his enticing words or man's wisdoms, or, or, or words of wisdom, because all that words of wisdom would make the cross of Christ of none effect. I mean, it took the death, the burial, the resurrection, yeah. and the power of God to make our salvation real. Yeah. It took it all. Amen. I mean, how can you explain Jesus Christ living and dying on that cross? And it took the power of God to place the sins of the world upon Jesus Christ. Yeah. I mean, that takes the power and then to lay him into the tomb and then to rise him up. It takes the power of Amen. God. Yeah. You cannot have just worldly wisdom in just a description, but it's the power of God that, took, that does that. And it's the power of God that preaching of the cross Amen. will save people's souls. Yeah. That preaching, the gospel will teach you how to be saved. The gospel will teach you how to live. Yeah, the man. gospel will teach you Amen. how to Amen. die and Amen. what's going to happen when you die. The preaching of the cross teaches us that there's a penalty for sin. There is a penalty for your sins. Yeah. The preaching of the cross, it's lonely, it's forsaken, it brings isolation. The preaching of the cross is a reproach to people. But the preaching of the cross shows that it's death by sin. Yeah. But to us that believe the preaching of the cross, it brings the power of God to salvation to us and it gives eternal life to people. Yeah. My yeah. eternal yeah. life that I have yeah. is all based on yeah. what Jesus did on Calvary, yeah. on that cross yeah. of Calvary. The preaching of the cross is foolish, it says here, to them that perish, because they will not believe that salvation and eternal life and that all that heaven has is wrapped up in a beaten and whipped and a public humiliated Jewish man yeah. that died on that cross. But that beaten, whipped, public humiliated man was God in the flesh. Yeah. He was not Amen. just any yeah. man. Right. That was Amen. God in the flesh. Amen. And that God man that died on that cross, that resurrected that third day, 
that gave us eternal life and the preaching of the cross of what Jesus did and who he was can give eternal life Amen. to anybody yeah. that Amen. will believe yeah. on Amen. him. Amen. But to the people think that's foolishness yeah. to preach yeah. like that. The preaching of the cross of Jesus Christ dying for the sins of the world and dying for your sins to the world, it is foolish. Yeah. They think it's foolish because they don't think themselves to be sinners. Yeah. Or they may say, oh, I, I know I've sinned, but I ain't sinned that bad. Yeah. You know, oh, I'm, I ain't done nothing bad enough to go to hell for. And that's what they, they want to maintain their righteousness. They want to maintain their good deeds. They refuse to believe that their sin is bad enough for God to send them to hell. But for us that believe, we see Jesus Christ dying on the cross of Calvary yeah. for our sins. Amen. We see Jesus Christ dying on the cross, making an atonement, making that human body sacrifice uh, for sin on the cross. We see Jesus Christ dying on that cross of Calvary that it pleased God and satisfied God that a real legitimate substitute is being made for mankind and that we believe that Jesus Christ doing all of that through the preaching of that gives us the eternal life. Yeah. And, we, and by faith, we believe that what Jesus Christ did on Calvary was 100% enough to save everybody on this world. And there in verse 23, it says, We preach Christ crucified. Jesus Christ did it all on Calvary. It says here, But to the Jews, a stumbling block. They just couldn't imagine that their Messiah, that they, kept, that they was looking for, was there hanging on the cross. Unto the Greeks... Foolishness. Ages, ages, well, it's foolish. Yeah. You know, before Paul went to Corinthians, he went to Athens. Yeah. At that time, Athens was a you know, great city. All the wise, educated colleges, people were there in Athens. Had all their philosophies, philosophers, I mean, Greek mythology and all the little Zeus and Hercules and whatever those little gods are. Paul went there and he saw them. He heard them. And he said the whole city is given to idolatry. Yeah. And they spent all their time in just trying to learn something new. Yeah. They spent all their time in worldly lust and pleasures and, and learning lessons. That, I mean, they thought that you had to... Um, the best way to experience life is to grab it in yeah. and to take it all in, drink it all up. That was one of their philosophy. If you want to know what it's like to fly, take some drugs. Yeah. You'll <laughs> learn how to fly. Yeah. You, get, you want to learn how not to be um, um, beaten up or you want, if you want to learn something, you know, you get you know, beaten up for, you say, well, I ain't going to do that no more. I mean, there's just all kinds of, of worldly philosophies of lessons that they believed and they taught. But Paul got there, and when he saw that, Paul began to preach to him, and he began to preach to him, and he told him that, that on one day that God is going to judge the world in righteousness, and they needed to repent. Yeah. And, but when he mentioned that God raised up Jesus from the dead, the preaching of the cross. It says they mocked him. Yeah. And they put it off, saying, this is a foolish thing to, to, yeah. for us yeah. to hear. Even though their own mythology had some of their gods dying and, and coming back to life in a spirit form and stuff. But, but the whole city was given to idolatry. And, and that, but God laughs. At the wisdom of me. Yeah. Because he knows how foolish and useless and pointless it is. Yeah. Yeah. But the God's yeah. purpose yeah. for Jesus Christ and him dying on that cross was to save your soul. Yeah. And therefore God yeah. chose the foolishness of preaching. The foolishness of the preaching of the cross to save them that are lost. 
And it, and, I mean, it's not foolish preaching, but it's foolishness to the world yeah. that a man would stand up here and would preach that salvation is in a cross that happened 2,000 years ago on yeah. Calvary all the way on another continent. But that salvation, the world just don't understand that. I, I, I just think it's foolishness. Yeah. Now, why would God choose to do the things that he done or, or does? Well, I don't know, but it does say here in verse 29 that it said, No flesh should glory in his presence. God wants to have, he deserves to have all the credit because he's done it all from yeah. creation to salvation. Amen. I wonder how. Robert C. Byrd, I know God rest his soul. I wonder how he would feel if he would donate all this money to give us all these bridges and roads. I mean, I think West Virginia has had more Robert C. Byrd buildings and bridges and roads while he was still living. I wonder why, what he would felt if we would have named it something else besides his name. I mean, granted, he's the one who got the money for it. He's the one who worked through Congress to get it. He's the one that got the money and, and gave it to the state of West Virginia to build buildings and bridges. I wondered if he would appreciate it if we called it, you know, the Donald Duck Bridge or, you know, something like that. No, because he wanted his name because he wanted the credit. God made this world. God created everything. Amen, amen. God yeah. made salvation. Amen. And it's yeah. all he deserves, yeah. all amen. the credit. That's because right. man yeah. has been a failure at everything. Yeah, God amen. failed it. Man failed in the Garden of Eden. Yeah. Man failed with his conscience. Israel failed in keeping the commandments. All the people of this world they tried to promote world peace, saying if we do this and we do that, and all we have is wars and more wars and more wars. Yeah, you would think by now they might could get it right, yeah. but they ain't, and amen. they won't, amen. and they can't, yeah. because man is a failure. Yeah, that's right. amen. They try to promote um, prosperity. They try to promote, well, let's give the little man a chance. And, and all we got to do is give him a chance and give him some money so he can pull himself up. He can't pull himself yeah, up. Amen. There are still impoverished people today. Let's just feed the hungry. We just need to feed the hungry. All the poor, starving kids. There's a commercial I heard on the radio, and I hear it saying, we need to um, give more money to feed the kids. Well, let me ask you something. Where are the parents at? Yeah, amen. Yeah. Why ain't they feeding their yeah. own kids? Amen. Amen. We say all they need is jobs. Let's just give them jobs. All they need is jobs, and they'll quit this drugging, or they'll quit their, all they need is jobs. No, you give them the jobs, then you just give a drug addict more money. That's all, I mean, the man's philosophies and wisdom in the way they try to do things, it will not Amen. work Amen. on people. Amen. Granted, I'll, I'll give you the credit, some people, you know, you take ten people, two or three or four, I don't know, they may change in their life on their outward behavior. But the other seven or eight, six of them, eight of them, it's the same old thing. What good will it do to clothe and feed the poor and the needy if they both end up going to hell? Yeah. Yeah. The poor and needy, all they find out, I found me a source to get me food. Yeah. That's all they want to live for. Yeah. And then the, the people who had the money who donate the food and donate the time, I've done something good. Yeah, Look amen. what I've done. Yeah, amen. That ain't what, that is not what people need. Amen. People need the gospel. Amen. People amen. need to know that it's yeah. Jesus Christ amen. that died on Calvary yeah. that makes the difference. Now, all of that is just kind of my introduction of what I wanted to preach about. 
All right. The preaching of the cross is foolish to them that perish. Right. But the preaching of the cross is more important than any worldly wisdom Amen. or yeah. wisdoms of words. The preaching of the cross is a power of God unto Amen. salvation. Yeah. It says here back here in 1 Corinthians chapter verse 30. I got a four point message and it won't take me very long. It says here that but unto him, but of him ye are in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us. Look, we that are saved, that are in Christ Jesus, who God made unto us. This is what God made unto us. He made us wisdom, He made us righteousness. He made us sanctification, and he made us redemption. Amen. You say, why? And all that is a result of Jesus Christ dying yeah, on amen. Calvary. Right. You say, why did he have to make us wise, righteous, clean, and safe? Because we are stupid, yeah. we are unrighteous, yeah. we are filthy, and we are lost. Yeah, amen. You say, I don't like to be called that. I don't like to be classified like that. You mean, you mean you don't want to be classified as what you are? Yeah. As unrighteous? Yeah, amen. As yeah. filthy? Right. Yeah. Stupid? Or lost? Amen. Yeah. That's what mankind is. Right. Yeah. But Jesus Christ made us amen. wise. He made us sanctification. Yeah. He made us redemption. And he made us righteous. Yeah. And it's all in Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, first thing he made to us, he made us wisdom. Why? Like I said, because mankind's stupid. Yeah. We're stupid because we think we can do things without God. Amen. We think we can do it by ourselves. Yeah. Amen. Pick any subject you want to. Yeah. The way you want to live. The way you want to think, you can pick any you know, subject on creation, philosophy, education. You think you can get peace. You think you can live morally right. You think you can achieve your highest potential. You think you can obtain inner peace by mm, you know, meditating. You yeah. think you, do you think you can maintain a, 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 a wisdom about you that, that will make you wiser than anybody else? And you think you can do that without God? No. Amen. That's why people are stupid. Yeah. Because they do not realize how bad they need God. Amen. Now, the Bible says the beginning of wisdom is to fear the Lord. Yeah. As the first thing is to fear God. Yeah. But you see, people don't want to fear God. People won't even admit there is a God. Yeah. Amen. And so therefore, they can't be wise. They might be educated, but they're not wise. Let me just, this is just a little example here. Take evolution. I mean, you've got to really be educated and brainwashed yeah, amen. to believe yeah. in evolution. Amen. I mean, That's right. they use all, I mean, there's a lot of scientific evidences there are scientific conclusions of things that are beyond me. But one thing I do know, they're not evolving. Yeah. All right? To think that they're trying to find a missing link is laughable. Amen. Yeah. All right? To think this world came by a explosion yeah. is laughable. Amen. Amen. You cannot recreate that in a lab. You cannot create that under a scientific experiment. Yeah. The only thing an explosion did is tear things up. Amen. To, be, to blow things up. Yeah. You cannot explain why there are many species of animals and only one of them turned into a man. Yeah. You can't explain why an organism that came out of a slime pit, how it produced a male and a female. Yeah, and then it produced an animal. And then that animal had to reproduce to a male and female. Yeah. 
And then you, why did that, those animals, why did one become a man? And their answer, well, that's why it took millions and millions of years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amen. You're foolish. Amen. That's, now, you're a fool to believe in evolution. Amen. Yeah. But the thing is, you don't believe in God. <clears throat> and the Bible says that the fool has said in his heart, yeah. there is no God. Yeah. Amen. Not in his head. His heart. Yeah. You try to educate your head with stuff while denying your heart. Amen. Yeah. I will admit that God came from somewhere, and I can't explain where. Yeah. You know, it takes it by faith. Yeah. But I do believe God said I'm from everlasting to everlasting, yeah. and I believe that by faith. Yeah. Amen. I can't explain that. Just like the evolutionists can't explain their hypotenuse and conclusions and suspicious and theories. But they put their faith in that. Right. Yeah, that's right. And what is so damnable about evolution is that it teaches that you are just an animal and that when you die, you die just like any animal. Amen. Without no repercussions yeah, yeah. and no accountability Amen. to God the Father. Yeah, that's right. That is what makes evolution so damnable. Amen. And that's what the devil is trying to teach people all the way from grade school and on into college. Yeah. Now, God told Moses about how he created the world. Yeah. Moses wasn't there when he created, when God created the world. But to differentiate, to differentiate between mythology and the Bible account of creation is that God told Moses. Now, why would Moses believe God? Well, the same reason why you believe people. Yeah. God kept his word to Moses. Amen. When you read there in Exodus, everything that God told Moses what God would do God did it. Yeah. Put that rod, turn into a serpent. Yeah. It came a serpent. Take that rod and lift it up and all the water turns to blood. Yeah. It did. Take that rod, lift it up. The land is covered with lice. Yeah. Everything that God said to Moses, God did. Yeah. And God did it right on time. Yeah, amen. Tomorrow, this is what's going to happen. Yeah. It happened just like God Amen. said. Yeah. God had the power to do what he said he was yeah. going to do. Yeah. And he done it. Yeah. I can believe somebody who's credible as that. Amen. And on the other thing, <clears throat> what makes mankind different than animals? Man's the only creature that has to wear clothes. Yeah. Why? There's a conscience in there Amen. from Adam and Eve. And we put on clothes. Yep. That's how we differentiate between animals. Animals had their own. God created them and they had their own fur. Yeah. Man was created naked and was not ashamed. But the moment Adam and Eve bit of that fruit of knowledge of good and evil, they were naked and were ashamed. Yeah. Therefore, we put on clothes. Now, if you want to be wise, you need to find it in Jesus Christ in the cross of Calvary. Yeah. Second thing, it says here that God was made unto us righteousness. Why was God made righteousness unto us? Very simple, because we ain't right. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. If you don't believe what the Bible tells you about mankind, that we're born with the sinful nature, we have no righteousness of, of our own. We have nothing on our own that we can appease God by. Yeah, right. And just think for a moment. All your inner thoughts, all your inner reactions that you have in your heart, do you think they're righteous? How are you going to stand before a holy God? Yeah. Let me tell you what some of your inner thoughts are. Pride. Amen. I can do it. Yeah. Look at me. I'm somebody. 
I'm educated. Yeah, I'm in the Harvard Law School. I'm a lawyer. I'm now the governor. I'm now whatever. Yeah, you know, I teach with a PhD. I mean, whatever. Pride. Amen. Proud. I'm going to do it my way. Yeah. You ain't going to tell me what to do. I'm going to make my own way. What's that Frank Sinatra saying? I did it my way. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wonder where that got him. Yeah, amen. Hatred. Then your heart. Hatred. Let someone poke you enough. Yeah. There'll be hatred in your heart. Anger. Jealousy. Let somebody take something of yours. Yeah. Let somebody else have something that you don't have. Yeah. Yeah, and you don't want to work for it. Yeah. Jealousy. Amen. Covetousness. Can't even pronounce that word. And not to forget just fornications and idolatries. These things come out of a man's heart instinctively. You don't need no education. You don't need no learning about how to um, refine all these things. These things are in each man and woman here. And you plan to say that you've got righteousness to stand before a loving God? I don't care how much you refine. I don't care how much you... Uh, um, Teaching etiquettes, you can have three spoons on this or forks or eat with your pinky held out and all that stuff in etiquettes. And I don't care how much you suppress your feelings by meditations or whatever people do with, you know, trying to find their inner peace or whatever. These traits will come out of your mouth because they're in your heart. Because they're a part of your body. They're a part of the fallen nature of man. And you are not righteous in God's eyes. That's why God had to make Jesus Christ the righteousness. And that's why when you get saved, God had to make you righteous in Jesus Christ. And God had to give you righteousness. Because we ain't got righteousness on our own. But it was all made by the, what Jesus did on Calvary. The third thing it says here, that he made unto us sanctification. That's because we're dirty. Yeah. We're filthy in our behaviors. We're corrupt in our dealings. We're unholy in our living. I know we primp and fluff and puff our bodies to make them clean on the outside, but I'm talking about what's on the inside. Yeah. Our heart is dirty. Our unnatural, our natural heart is dirty, vile, and unholy. Our behaviors are corrupt in themselves, always seeking our benefit, seeking our pleasure and our comfort. Mm -hmm. We don't even want to seek out. You probably had to make yourself get up out of bed to come to church Amen. today. A lot of, they, don't, they don't even want to seek after God. Jesus Christ had to die on that cross of Calvary to sanctify us. And it said there in John chapter 17, I sanctify myself for their sake. Yeah. Jesus Christ kept himself clean so that I could be clean yeah. also. Yeah. Sanctification it also means to be set apart. Before you were saved, you're a part of this world. You walked according to the course of this world. You did whatever the world wanted you to do. Yeah. Whatever the uh, whim was, whatever the fashion was, you walked just like the world did. But when Jesus Christ died on that Calvary's cross and saved you, he sanctified you and set you apart for now for his use yeah. and his purpose. Last but not least, he made us redemption. That's because we all needed saved. Amen. We needed saved from our sins. We yeah. even need to be saved from ourselves. Yeah. And we needed somebody else to do it. Yeah. The Bible says in Isaiah, Look unto me, all ye ends of the earth, and be ye saved. Everybody from the Old Testament to the New Testament they needed somebody to save them, and that somebody yeah. is Jesus Christ Amen. that died on that cross yeah. of Calvary. He died for my sins. He died for our sins. 
He died for your sins. Amen. He died for the stupid. He died for the unrighteous. He died for the unholy. He died for the filthy. He died for the unsaved just to make them wise, redempted, redemptive, <laughs> righteous, and sanctification. Now, I like the word being redeemed because it lets me know that I've been redeemed. Amen. And to be redeemed, you've been bought back. Yeah. Somebody thought that I was worth buying. Amen. And that price was so expensive that it costed Jesus Christ yeah. his own life, their own yeah. Calvary. Yeah. It was costly. And that I know that I'm redeemed and I know that I'm saved and I know that it took Jesus Christ and what he did on Calvary to buy me back. He had to hang on that cross of Calvary and lay down his life so that I could be saved. Yeah. I don't see why I'm valuable though. But Amen. God did. Yeah. I don't know why you're valuable. But God does. Yeah. Yeah. God sees something in you that he thought was so valuable. I tell you what, it was your soul. He yeah. knew that if nothing was going to happen, you were going to die and go to hell. Yeah. And God said that soul was so valuable. Yeah. I'm going to save that soul. Yeah. And not only am I going to save that soul, but I'm going to teach that person who owns that soul how to live. Yeah. I'm going to teach that person how to be smart and how to be wise. I'm going to teach a person how to be clean. I'm going to teach a person how to be sanctified and clean. And it's all done through the cross Amen. of Jesus yeah. Christ. Right. Everything the world wants, everything the world wants to go to heaven, all the world wants peace, they want righteousness, they want to be clean, they want to be forgiven, they want wisdom. But everything the world wants is all wrapped up in a yeah. beaten, right. whipped, humiliated, dead Jewish man Amen. that turned out to be God in the flesh yeah. redeeming the world unto himself. To the Jews it's a stumbling block. To the Greeks it's foolishness. But unto us that are saved yeah. it's the power of God. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, the preaching of the cross is foolish to some people. Yeah. But to us we know what it is. Amen. Amen. Preacher, you can come. Amen. I don't know if anyone wants to come and uh, play the piano or something, but the preaching of the cross is the power of God. Amen. That's what God chose. Yeah. And he chose the preaching so that we can point people to Jesus Christ Amen. of what he did on Calvary. He did it all, paid it all. Amen. And it's through the cross of Jesus Christ that God was made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Go ahead, Richard. Thank you very much. Amen. Amen. Telling us again the story of Jesus. Amen. Through Jesus, we get wisdom. Through Jesus, we get right. sanctification. Through yeah. Jesus, we get redemption. Yeah. Thank the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, yeah. Amen. Amen. for saving me. Amen. Let's stand and sing together. What number you 310, to number 310. All to Jesus I surrender. for coming. Thank you, Miss Jeannie, for coming to church. You've laid out way too long. Yeah. <laughs>
We are glad you are here. Amen. Isn't that great? Yeah. Amen. Appreciate her and CT. Please pray for Gary. Yes. Amen. Please pray for all of our uh, victims of physical malady. Pray for Michelle. Yeah. Pray for Robin. Pray for Kenny. Amen. Pray for Bob Pennington. Yeah. Yeah. Pray for Lou Whitley. It just goes on and on and on. Yeah. Pray for our people. They do well with it. They represent the Lord well. One purpose for sickness is to glorify God. Yeah. That's one of the purposes. Amen. Yeah. And if we can glorify God during that, I, I'd like to be a good representative yeah, of him. Amen. 